Eh, pues recibimos de nuevo a Henning Sols, que interviene para hablar de 3D y su importancia para la cultura europea. Yeah, ni nice seeing you practicing with Menti. Um, keep your phones closed after the coffee break. We have a couple of more uh, questions for you. And um, let's see how that goes. Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Isabel. So you made a nice transition already to 3D, which was mentioned a couple of times this morning uh, already. And yeah, like Isabel was saying, we have a campaign called Twinit that um, kicked off in Pamplona a couple of months ago and um, is about yeah, 3D for Europe's culture. And as 3D is getting more important, um, I would like to talk a bit more about this uh, campaign. It is a call to all e EU member states uh, for a pan-European collection of 3D digitized heritage assets. Um, so it's really something that goes across the EU, and um, the idea is to have, which sounds very little, one item per each member state, um, one 3D model uh, that we want to collect as part of this uh, 3D campaign, but it's meant to really kick off something, something more and something that goes goes beyond these one model per member state, because um, looking at the European Commission recommendation from 2021 um, to develop the data space that I've uh, mentioned before, um, 3D plays a very big role in, in this. Um, we will see those recommendations today in, in more places, uh, but there's really a lot of focus on 3D, so the, the Commission is really calling on all member states to digitize um, 3D monuments, sites, in particular those that are at risk, and also that are visited, visited a lot. Um, and if you know the recommendations uh, a bit more, you will also see that the targets for 3D digitization are really, really ambitious. Um, so we're talking about not only one model per member state, but thousands and hundreds of thousands. Um, for some member states, even millions of 3D models. That needs to be published in the next um, uh, six years. Um, so the re Commission is really trying to push us, uh, push all member states, and we need to see how we can make uh, that work. So that campaign is meant to be a, a case deliver a case study as well for us to learn from it and understand what 3D means for us, uh, how we can actually work with this, and then really try to also see what of the um, heritage assets that we have in every country can be sort of rescued or presented in a more different way uh, through this way. Um, so, <clears throat> like I said, it, it's really it really plays a key role for the deployment of the data space. The data space will not be a success uh, if we have, at the end, only the, those couple of thousand 3D models that we currently have in Europeana. Um, so that's something that uh, uh, there's high expectation that it will change in the coming years. Um, so because of this, we are also trying to focus a lot of other activities that we're having on 3D. So when we think about um, training, for example, or capacity building, we have 3D in mind. So is, is there, if we need to develop a training, um, is there something we can do to help uh, progressing with uh, 3D? Um, innovative, innovative ways of working on aggregation, that's also something we have, we work with having uh, 3D in mind. <clears throat> Thinking about uh, like member state relations, um, Again, 3D comes to mind, and the Twinit campaign is a way to like build on those relationships and uh, Im improve them. Um, looking at another thing like diversify user engagement, yes, build with bits was mentioned. Like other ways of 
doing uh, XR, VR experiences. This is really something where 3D uh, will play a major role. And overall, really thinking about our products and also frameworks with 3D in mind. So the publishing framework we will talk about after the coffee break. As it currently stands, there's currently work underway to really um, amend this, improve this to accommodate it 3D. Same for our data model, EDM. There's work underway to extend this to make it work for uh, 3D. Um, there's, we expect this will have quite an impact. Um, so first of all, as I said, like, it is meant to support the goals of these recommendations from November 2021 on a common European data space for cultural heritage. And uh, with, with this, we are really trying to also to, to help and support the member states with their 3D digitalization and preservation efforts, overcoming challenges, um, which I will present in a minute, and uh, also create awareness and a shared understanding of the opportunities um, and benefits this will, will bring. Um, yeah, Isabel was touching on, on, on this before. And yeah, really at the end, increase the number of 3D models that we have on your piano or in the data space at the end <clears throat> that we can, we can work with that is usable, accessible, and um, that where there is an audience that can work with it. A uh, quick overview of the campaign. It started last year in, in, in June with like a, the, 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 the call to action. And we, we worked along the, the presidency events, the Spanish presidency event here is also mentioned mid-October. And um, we are now reaching, actually reached, uh, because 29th of February was the deadline for uh, the submission of the 3D models. And we are now in the phase of like working with them, ingesting them, improving them, publishing them, and preparing for the final event um, in Brussels, which is also meant to really celebrate them, present them, um, think about new ways, interactive ways to engage with those 3D models. And this will be in mid-May. And then I think the real work actually starts because then we still need to learn from this experience and build on this experience to, um, to make progress. So a couple of examples of 3D models that were proposed by the member states. This is a um, church from Finland um, in the category that is at, at risk to be potentially also dis destroyed, but it's also very much um, interesting for, for visitors. So that this was proposed by Finland uh, for Slovenia, a different uh, type of building, the National Library uh, as a building uh, was proposed. And for Spain, um, this object uh, was proposed uh, for the Twinit campaign. Um, we heard we are almost there of, of, of like also getting it um, to, to your piano. Um, and then hopefully you can also enjoy um, a 3D model of this uh, from the Yopena uh, website. But yeah, as I said, there are challenges that we're working with. And I give a few examples that also illustrate where we, where we currently stand. Um, the whole question on storage and viewing is really something that is, um, uh, is a not, not, not really solved yet. I mean, if you start working with 3D models, you will soon realize they can, they can turn huge. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a storage question uh, behind this. And also, if you think about the, the varieties of models to make things accessible to a, to a user in a way that it's, asable, it's actually enjoyable online, uh, it's again like a storage question and then the question about viewers. Uh, what is a bit of a problem, I would say? I mean, Sketchfab, uh, I, I hope many of you know about this, is a very popular place for people to publish their 3D models, but it doesn't come without issues. A commercial platform outside of the EU is not our favorite. So that's something we really have to also work on, uh, using more open source viewers, uh, finding uh, viewers that we all share and want to work with uh, to then use them uh, across the, the, the sector. Uh, and this is also work that is still um, on, ongoing. So for now, we don't have a solution for this. We still see a growing a number of 3D models in Sketchfab, but we know this is not the, the, the place we want to be in, in, at the end. 
Um, talk about quality of 3D. Um, this is also a big topic because it's, it's, yeah, it's different from 2D objects. Uh, content quality plays a role like how many, um, yeah, how, did, how you digitize your model to make it work. A small object is different from like an um, archaeological site. So this really is, a, is still a challenge. The paradata, um, in addition to metadata, is a term that is used, and you hear that quite a lot uh, when you talk about 3D. There's a study um, that I have here on, this, on the screen that goes very much in depth in, in that topic, and we have to think about how we want to accommodate all of this in the context of the uh, data model and also the publishing framework to acknowledge uh, quality of 3D in a in the right way. Uh, I mean, you're talking about the challenges we already still face with 2D models. Um, the discussion we had um, here in the round table indicated that there's still topics to discuss. So we also learn from the 3D discussion to transform into the 2D world, and hopefully that will also improve uh, this in the future. And um, aggregation is a challenge we also have seen facing. We've seen a couple of aggregators that are very experienced and very well set up dealing with 2D content. When it comes to 3D, we see them struggling. Um, so that, that also led to um, submission of 3D models as, as XML files, um, which is not what we want to have in the future because it's not scalable. Um, but it illustrates that there are challenges to overcome. So I'm, I'm curious how Hispana will handle uh, the 3D models and the um, different requirements, um, something yeah, we can happy to discuss. Um, not sure how this is in, in, in Catalonia, uh, if, there, if there, there is potential. Um, and uh, we can then discuss this like uh, going forward, but it, that's a topic um, that is out there. So any questions also you are having, um, most welcome. And we are happy to learn together uh, with you along that way. Um, so that's a screenshot of what we currently have. Uh, so we are a bit more than halfway through in terms of the 3D model that we have after the deadline. So you can argue that's not really so great, but actually I'm very uh, happy about what we have already. Seeing the challenges that, that were out there um, and the reasonably short time that was available, I think we, we got a lot of um, different 3D models also um, from, from right now more than half of the uh, member states. Uh, as said, Spain is on its way, um, so we, we are optimistic we will have a good uh, solid foundation for, uh, to show to all ministries of culture coming to Brussels in mid-May. Mid so that's uh, what I'm uh, looking forward to. Um, and I give you one example, uh, um, because also there is another flavor connected to Twinit. I'm picking on, on this um, little creature. Well, it's not very little. <coughs> it's the iguanodon that is um, on exhibition in the Natural History Museum in Brussels. It's actually quite big. If, you, if you've been there, it could uh, look at the um, balcony easily. Um, and I, I've picked this also because um, uh, maybe interesting for, uh, for you. Uh, my background is I'm actually a paleontologist by education. Um, so I've I've worked with these, these guys in the past, in my previous life before Europeana. Uh, so that's why I was happy seeing this coming in and also start working with this because 3D models is one thing, um, but there's a lot more also 2D content out there that maybe um, can be sit alongside those 3D models. I mean, many of you are working in a, a library context, working with text material. So looking at the Spanish object, you may not have um, the object uh, yourself, but you may have maybe research papers or articles or books or texts or manuscripts or anything that is, can complement that 3D model uh, and enrich it with additional information, contextualize it, and this is also valuable to, to flag this to us, to, to say like, hey, we have material that others would be interested if they look at that Spanish 3D model to also look at additional um, things and uh, in, in that case, uh, in that case, there are a lot more bones from the dinosaur that are ex uh, ex in the collection of other museums, uh, and we have them in Europeana, and it's good to bring them together. And there's also 
other creatures that actually, or plants that lived in the same environment as a dinosaur, um, that would tell us that actually the dinosaur lived in a, in a swamp. <clears throat> and um, we can tell this from everything else that lived at the same time uh, around this. And we also have some of that content in Europeana. So we can kind of reconstruct where this creature lived in the, in the past and bring this in context with um, that 3D model. And this is something I encourage you also to think about how you could enrich the Spanish contribution to the Twinit uh, campaign with your 2D content that you hopefully maybe have in your collections. And if that's already in your piano, uh, we, can, we can tag it, flag it, bring it together in an exhibition or something similar. Um, so let your Hispana colleagues know or, or, or us directly, and we are happy to promote this. Thank you. I think there's a coffee break now. So uh, time to relax and refresh, and see you back in... Half an hour? Half an hour. Okay, 30 minutes. Thanks. <laughs>